This video is brought to you by Captivating History. Constantine is known as the emperor who made Christianity the main religion of Rome, thus making a substantial contribution to its spreading throughout the known world at the time. He is also revered for his efforts in building Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul, which became the most powerful city in the world. Made a saint for his acceptance and propagation of Christianity, his behavior was often far from saintly. Brutal and ruthless, Constantine owed his power to the sword, murdering his allies, friends, and even his closest family in his quest to retain his authority. A man of contrasts, his embrace of Christianity was nonetheless a decisive act perhaps unparalleled in its importance to Western history. Constantine was born in a Roman Empire that was in crisis. Civil wars, diseases, and invasions were rendering the empire overstretched and vulnerable. When he was born in 280 AD, Emperor Diocletian had split the empire into four quarters, ruled in a tetrarchy of four different rulers, hoping that this would help bring order. Constantine's father, Constantius I, was one of these rulers. In 305, Constantius was proclaimed emperor of the western half of the empire, while Diocletian took the eastern half for himself. As a child, Constantine was sent to Nicodemia, modern-day Izmit, Turkey, grew up in the eastern half of the empire, and was raised at the court of Diocletian. During this time, Constantine witnessed Diocletian's ruthless and fierce persecution of Christians, which may have molded his later approach. Amid the complicated tussle for power, Constantine was proclaimed emperor after his father's death in 306 in York, Britain. A capable and flamboyant soldier, Constantine set about consolidating his power base in Gaul before setting his sights on broader glory. His first obstacle was a rival for the title of Western Emperor, his brother-in-law Maxentius, whom he defeated at the Battle of Milvian Bridge in 312. Not only was this a tremendous political victory for Constantine, but it also proved to be revelationary for another significant reason. Before the battle, Constantine is said to have had a vision or dream wherein Jesus promised he would protect his armies through the vision of the cross accompanied by the words, By this sign you will conquer. Following the vision, Constantine ordered that a cross, the Christian symbol, be painted on all of his soldiers' shields. There are various versions of this legend, with slightly different variations depending on sources. Regardless of his conversion circumstances, under this Christian emblem, Constantine emerged victoriously, attributing the victory to the Christian faith. It should also be noted that in the classical Greek and Roman tradition, many rulers expected political and military success to derive from religious piety. This weakens any claim that Constantine's conversion was nothing more than a politically motivated calculation. In 313, Constantine, now a Western emperor, met with his eastern counterpart Licinius. Together, they agreed to the Edict of Milan, a groundbreaking proclamation for freedom of worship to all people. This proclamation effectively legalized Christianity as a religion, allowing Christians to organize their worship as they saw fit. The edict also returned all property confiscated during the recent persecutions, a sign of things to come. Although the empire's western and eastern halves enjoyed a time of limited peace, factionalism was never far away in the Roman Empire. Relations between Constantine and Licinius deteriorated. In 320, Licinius resumed his persecution of Christians, effectively culminating in a renewed civil war by 324, in which Constantine triumphed to emerge as sole Roman emperor. He reunited the empire under the banner of Christianity. Constantine attributed all of his success to Christianity, writing that he had been chosen as God's instrument for the suppression of impiety and dubbing himself the equal of the apostles. The triumphal arch built at Rome attributed his victories to the inspiration of the divinity. However, Constantine also ensured that plenty of credit went to his own military genius. In a letter to the Persian king, he asserted that God had chosen him to bring peace and prosperity to all lands and that it was his ambition to do so. Seeing it his duty to propagate the true religion, he had no qualms about using his imperial position to further Christianity's cause. Many have questioned Constantine's commitment to the faith, 
though there is even more evidence in letters to Christian clergy that suggest Constantine was sincere. Indeed, Eusebius, Constantine's biographer and most prominent source, insisted that the emperor believed he had a special relationship with the Christian god. In any case, Constantine did his bit to remove the empire's impiety and unify the state through Christianity. Crucifixion, sexual immorality, prostitution, pagan sacrifice, and gladiatorial shows were all abolished. He also glorified Christianity through his building works. The Church of the Holy Apostles was built in Byzantium, and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was erected in Jerusalem. In Rome, the Church of St. Peter was handsomely decorated to reflect its importance. In his reign, Constantine also established influence over the Holy Church itself, weighing in on debates over the true nature of the religion. Wanting a unanimous position on the divine nature of Christ, Constantine summoned a group of church officials to the Council of Nicaea in 325. From the meeting came the Nicene Creed, which established that Jesus was, in fact, a divine being. Constantine hoped and urged church officials to accept the council's conclusions, though violent struggles over the questions raised continued to cause tension within the empire. Although Constantine seems to have been a popular ruler, he didn't have everything his way. During a visit to Rome to celebrate the 20th anniversary of his victory and the beginning of his reign, Constantine refused to participate in a pagan procession. This offended the Romans and was indicative of the broader religious spectrum still evident within the empire. Around the same time, Constantine had his wife, Fausta, and his son, Crispus, executed for treason, possibly even for adultery. The circumstances surrounding the executions are shrouded in mystery, though it was evidence that Constantine could be as ruthless as he was practical in dealing with threats. After the souring events in Rome, Constantine was never to return. He set about dedicating his new capital, Constantinople, at Byzantium, now modern-day Istanbul, as the second Rome, rebuilding it to glorify the empire. As with many cases for Constantine, the decision to move the capital was practical and emotional. From a military perspective, Constantine realized it would be easier to defend against attacks from the east and protect valuable lands in Egypt if he moved his capital to a more defensible eastern position. Constantine rebuilt on a monumental scale. He offered free bread and full citizenship as an enticing welcoming offer to encourage high-ranking men to move there with their families. Churches popped up all over the city as Christians were naturally welcomed. Yet it should be noted that religious tolerance was not extended to all. Persecution of the Jews, the Christ killers, as Constantine saw them, intensified during his reign. Nevertheless, the city tripled in size over this rebuilding period. Constantine also built huge legislative halls and an enormous palace to establish the necessary gravitas for the new capital. This was a concerted attempt to shift the center of power away from the empire's emotional heart, Rome. Ultimately, Constantinople did eclipse Rome. Rome fell as the Western Empire crumbled in the late 5th century, and the Byzantine Empire, centered around Constantinople, continued to thrive. Constantine died in 337 AD. His legacy is inextricably linked to his reform of the Roman Empire's religious picture, and indeed the history of Christianity following his conversion. Unfortunately, this makes it difficult to assess his rule more widely whether or not he was an able politician, a great military commander, or a kind and honorable ruler. Because of his reform's polarizing nature, contemporary sources must be taken with a pinch of salt. Before and after his reign, Christian scholars venerated him as a protector, a wise guiding hand. Many contemporary sources represent little more than state propaganda. Some historical writings are even thought to be in the emperor's own hand. Conversely, Constantine critics were often his political enemies who wished to continue following the pagan religion. They were quick to judge his conversion to Christianity harshly, claiming it led to the empire's downfall in the long run. Whatever the truth, there seems to be a distinction in Constantine's legacy. It is not merely the conversion and protection of Christianity that is important, but the Christianization of the Roman culture alongside the upper class's classical culture. This essentially paved the way for the growth of Western medieval culture in the following centuries. To learn more about Constantine, then check out our book.
Constantine the Great, a captivating guide to the first Christian Roman Emperor and how he ruled the Roman Empire. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook for free while still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.